Hi, I'm Michael Healy. I'm one of the co-founders of Unit Network, and we're on a mission to solve the wealth and equity in the world. The thing that I'm really excited to speak about today is the token economy. You know, we look at the world at the moment. You know, there are a bunch of you know terrible problems and really pressing issues that you know need to be solved. You know, you look at something like you know water. You look at you know gender equity, racial equity. You look at homelessness. All of these problems. You know, and what we've identified is that it all boils down. You know, if we, to, if we solve this wealth and equity, you know, all of these problems are going to be much easier to solve. And then you think, why do we have this wealth and equity? You know, what we've identified is that there are two parts, two 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 groups of people in the world. There are the people who start companies and the people who invest in them. Those are the founders and the investors. We've got the other side, which are the customers and the employees. And what happens is, you know, the people who start companies, you know, the entrepreneurs, the creators, these people are super, super important. And the investors who support them financially and with support, um, they, they receive all of the ownership. While the customers and employees, you know, they don't really benefit in, in the monetary upside very directly. You know, if you look at something like Uber or you look at something like Airbnb, you know, if you're one of the first drivers of Uber, you know, or if you're one of the first hosts or one of the first guests on Airbnb, you know, you are integral to its success. If you think about, you know, the, your local coffee shop, you know, you think about the supermarket you, you frequent, you know, the customers and employees represent such a critical piece, you know. But we live in a world now where it's very difficult, super difficult to distribute that value. And you could say, hey, you know, it's, it's actually fair. You know, if you look at the likes of Facebook, without you know, someone like Mark Zuckerberg or without someone like Elon Musk or for, for Tesla, you know, none of these companies would, would, be, would be around, you know, without the founders and without investors to give them money, you know, they wouldn't have the money to get off the ground. But if you were the first, you know, employee, you know, if you the first customer, you know, to buy, um, you know, to sign up for one of these social networks or to use one of these photo sharing platforms, you know, you're such an integral piece in the upside. So, you know, why I'm so excited about the Web3 evolution and the, the revolution of this economy is what I strongly believe is it's going to create a more equitable world. You know, this, the same way the internet, you know, completely revolutionized the access to information. You know, before, if you wanted to learn about something, you know, to go to a library, you know, to speak to an expert, you know, you needed, you know, financial means to go to a bookshop, to buy books, to, you know, go to a, a really prestigious university to, to learn about information. And the internet basically equalized that. You know, it made it completely easy. It made it completely flexible. It, it would like to Google, like to Wikipedia. No matter how remote a place you were in the world, you had access to this information. You know, when the iPhone came out in 2008, people looked at those, you know, weird people sleeping outside the Apple store and they're like, Who gonna, who's going to pay $1,000 for a phone? It's like, you know, I'm very happy with my Nokia. None of, none of the you know, the, 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 iPhone can, the iPhone can't do much more than what my Nokia can do. And I, I recently checked out, you know, uh, the expo in Dubai and, and looked at the first iPhone. I went, wow, you know, it's crazy that, you know, how it's evolved. You know, when, so, you know, the iPhone has, com the, the smartphone, the Android, the iPhone has completely revolutionized communication. You know, before if you made a phone call, you know, it would have been a dollar or a euro or a franc or a pound a minute. And, you know, maybe a hundred dollars for a phone call wasn't a lot for a lot of people, you know, for, for a small minority of people. But now communication is completely revolutionized. If you want to exchange information, if you want to communicate with someone across the world, the smartphone has just made it so easy and super flexible. And now we go on to money. So, you know, if you have a network, if you've got a track record, you know, if you've got, you know, it, like um, for, for a small minority of people, it is very, very easy to raise capital. But for a vast majority, you know, even just raising, you know, a few hundred dollars, a few thousand dollars is really, really tough. And what the token economy is going to solve, this idea of tokenization, you know, is going to make it much more easy, you know, to raise capital. It's going to be much more easy to distribute capital. You know, the idea that, you know, you look at a company like Uber, it went public for, for $80 billion. You know, it had about 2 million drivers. You know, that's about $40,000 per driver. You know, and how much of this value went to the drivers? You know, or if you looked at Airbnb, you know, a, a, a multi-billion dollar company. If you were the first host on Airbnb and someone told you, hey, you know, you've got a nice apartment. Would you like some strangers to come stay in your apartment and we'll give you some money? You know, that's, a bit of, that's, that's quite, a, quite a big ask, right? It's a big, bit of a risk. And what we're saying is that this token economy is just going to completely transform the world. You know, the idea that, you know, if, you, if you're part of a, you know, a, um, you know, university, if you're part of, you know, uh, you frequent a local coffee shop, if you, if you support a startup, you know, if you, um, you know, your friend who's a musician or your friend who's a, a software developer and you're like, you know, she's really talented, you know, or he, he's got potential, you know, the ability to, to buy into them or even, you know, let's say you don't have any money, do some work with them. And then that way, you know, we're going to live in this society where we're all going to have, you know, collections of lots and lots of different tokens and that these tokens are going to represent a piece of the collective success. So, you know, people, people like to look at, you know, digital assets, they look 
at cryptocurrencies, look at tokens, and they go, hey, I haven't seen any of that yet. You know, they, they look at the top 100 coins, and they're like, what can I actually use any of this for? You know, and that's because you know, we're at a stage in, in innovation for this technology where it's just such early days. You know, we look at this technology, and, and a lot of people are writing it off. A lot of people are going, okay, what can I actually use this for? What can I use that for? If you look at something like Bitcoin, you know, Bitcoin has been super revolutionary. It's basically been one of the first tools where if you're an early user of it to receive payments or send payments or store value, you got directly benefited in the upside. You know, if you compare it to something like PayPal, if you used PayPal when it got started, you know, you, you used the PDA and, and, and you know, benefited from it you know, to receive payments, to sell products, you, you, want, you want a piece of the upside when it sold to eBay, when it went public. None of this value you know, went to the early users or to the early providers of, of value to the network. Then, you know, really cool, Ethereum in 2014 said, you know, decentralized payments are cool, storing value in a decentralized way is cool, but let's build other things. Let's build, you know, decentralized news. Let's build decentralized social networks. Let's, you know, create more software and, and, and powerful tools than just payments and storing value. So, you know, Ethereum, this general purpose blockchain is revolutionary. And what has come next, you know, this idea of, you know, the, the blockchain of blockchains, you know, things like Polkadot, things like Avalanche, things like Cosmos, you know, these are going to provide application specific blockchains. You know, the idea that, you know, there's not going to be a single blockchain that rules it all, but there's going to be thousands and thousands of blockchains. You know, the same way when email was started, you know, you could, you could, you could let's say someone used Hotmail, someone used Gmail, someone used Yahoo, all of these emails are interoperating between one another and they're communicating. We're at the stage where blockchains are like highways and they're not really connected to one another. They're completely fragmented. They need to go through exchanges. We're going to move to a world where all of these blockchains are seamlessly integrating. You know? and, and why this is so exciting is because once we take care of the technology layer, you know, people are not going to worry about that. You know, people like to think, should I use this? You know, Ethereum, should I use Solana? Should I use you know, Polkadot? Should I use Cardano? Should I use Matic? Should I use Polygon? All of this. All of that is going to matter a lot less. You know, what really matters is all of the things that we can create on top of this. So you know, everyone in, in the room, you know, everyone listening, they should be thinking, how can I create you know, a DAO? How can I create a token based on what I'm doing? You know, if someone's just graduated university, you know, they should create a token so that they can distribute it to all their fellow classmates, to their friends, to their family so that everyone is motivated in their collective success. You know, and we live in a world where people view competition, people look at you know, making more profit or making more money. All of this is gonna radically disappear this dec decade. You know, this idea that you know, we're gonna move to a more equitable society where the role of money and value is much less prevalent. The same way, as mentioned before, the internet has completely revolutionized information. The same way you know, the, the smartphone and, and mobile has completely revolutionized communication. It's really just a matter of time before the token economy, tokenization, and Web3 creates a new world where money and values is viewed and experienced radically different from today. So I I'm, I'm really appreciate the time. Thank you so much, everyone here. And uh, looking forward to partaking and collaborating on this journey. Thank you.